What is going on YouTube? Andrew Miller from WelcomeHeadlines.com. Coming back at y'all today with uh, kind of a late commitment breakdown. Um, also wanted to provide just a more of a generic recruiting update for uh, the Longhorns as uh, we're about to close the book on the month of June. Um, a very big one on the recruiting trail, no less for Texas for the 2024 and 2025 classes. Um, but yeah, I want to start this video. I'm going to do a little bit more of a brief breakdown of Texas's latest commitment in the 2024 class. That's uh, four-star North Richland Hills, uh, Richland High School interior offensive lineman, Daniel Cruz. Uh, yesterday, a little more than 24 hours ago as of the recording of this video, um, Texas landed uh, Cruz. He's their eighth commitment in the uh, 2024 class. Uh, the second commitment as well among offensive linemen. Um, the first being Nate Kibble, four-star interior offensive line in the Texas landed last weekend. Um, Cruz was a guy that was trending Texas for a while. He uh, had a he was on campus for his official visit to Texas last weekend, and then it only took a few more days for uh, him to announce his commitment to Texas. He was also considered a Texas lean for quite a while now. Um, he had taken multiple visits. You know, this is a guy that had been on uh, Kyle Flood's radar for for a long time now. Um, he was one of the top in-state priorities for Kyle Flood in the 2024 class, going back more than six or eight months now. So, um, yeah, if you're not familiar with the recruiting breakdowns that uh, you know that we do on the channel, um, you know, I've provided quick back background on Cruz, uh, but also talk about his uh, strengths, his game, um, and areas of improvement, and then projection to Texas. And again, this is going to just kind of be a quick summation. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, so as I mentioned. Cruz is a guy that Texas has been on for a while. He committed to Texas over offers from OU, Ohio State, Texas A&M, Baylor were a few of the bigger ones. Um, and, you know, he's not necessarily the, like when you look at his measurables on paper, he's six, about six foot three, 295 pounds. When you see that, you generically think, okay, he's not that, you know, traditional big human mold that Kyle Flood likes to recruit. You know, Kyle Flood likes those guys, bigger frames, longer arms. Um, you know, strong lower base, that sort of stuff. And, you know, Cruz checks some of those boxes, but not all of them. But, you know, for Cruz, that's okay. I think he's a guy that could grow to be about six foot four, and I think he could easily fill out a frame to get to about 315, maybe 320 pounds. Now, he's also recruited as a center for Texas, and so he doesn't necessarily need to be like an offensive tackle type size. He doesn't need to be that guy that's like six foot five, 330, 340 pounds. And so, you know, I, I like what his measurement or measurables look like right now, and I think he has ample time to grow into a bigger frame. Um, but yeah, I mean, why this commitment is so big for me beyond just the fact that Cruz is such um, such a capable run and pass blocker is the fact that he is the center of the future for Texas. He's recruited as a center, and he's going to be a multi-year starter. I'll get into more of like his projection later, but you know. Texas hasn't had, I think, this good of a pure center commit, um, you know, that the staff looked at, like, offered as a center for a good while now. And so Cruz is going to be a game changer in that regard. Um, in terms of his um, in terms of his skill set, his strengths, um, he's a guy, you know, I described him in the piece I did at the site, link that description below as always. Um, you know, I described him as an athletic and powerful um, interior offensive lineman. He's a guy that's really agile. He's got quick feet, good hands. Um, he actually does have a bigger wingspan. I think it's around six foot five, from what I can see from the latest measurements. I think that was a, from a combine last year. Maybe that was earlier this off season. But anyway, um, you know, he's a guy that is also, like I said, quick feet, good hands, quick off the line of scrimmage. And so, you know, he's a guy that can beat opposing defensive linemen at the point of attack pretty quickly. And once he gets his hands on you, it's hard for you to really get a release. And he's probably going to end up winning that battle. The, the way that Cruz is able to approach run blocking, again, um, quick hands, quick feet, um, you know, strong lower base, that equates to someone that's able to get off, uh, get off the ball quickly at the point of attack and, uh, you know, really take the right approach to win matchups and run blocking, whether that's the gap or uh, zone blocking scheme for the ground game. Um, he's going to be a guy that's going to be really effective in finding his assignment, locking in, and then opening up the necessary running lane. Um, you know, I, I think another thing that really um, that, that really catches my eye when I when I see Cruz on film is that he's a guy that I don't think you're going to need to help at all 
you know, right now Texas has to, you know, kind of pinch in a little bit for interior run blocking. Jake Majors is a smaller center. And so you know, he's a guy that can get moved around a little bit by some bigger nose tackles and even through some of the bigger three techs in the power five. And so, you know, Cruz is a guy that can hold his own, I think really against anyone that you're going to be facing, even in the SEC, especially if he's able to get that frame to around 315, 320 pounds. And so I think as an interior run blocker, he's going to be a major plus. You know, I've kind of hinted at it here and there, but I think some of the other finer points of his game, some of the other bigger strengths for Cruz, for one, um, his hands. Once he once he actually gets hands on you, you're not you're not really going to get released off that. You know, he's kind of got you. Um, you know, I, as always, I'll attach some B-roll to this uh, to this video, kind of give you all an idea what his film, what his highlights look like, um, what his game amounts to on the field, but. You know, you'll see that. Rarely is he gonna, you know, take the right approach and still get beat. Whether it's someone that's just gonna try to bull rush or you know try to use some array of, you know, basic to good pass rush moves. I don't think that those are things that will necessarily get the best of Daniel Cruz. He's just too adept at run blocking and pass blocking um, to let some of that more simple, uh, simple stuff along the interior get by him. Um, another thing, he really finishes blocks well. You know. I see that mentioned here and there when I've seen scouting reports of his game, but you know, <laughs> when I watch the film, there's just too many situations where Cruz has a guy, you know, kind of locked in, and you know where other linemen might let the play or start moving downfield. Cruz finishes that block; he sets the tone right away. He's a guy that's going to get a lot of pancakes on the forty, that's for sure. Um, you know, the ability to finish blocks is, you know, something that's often brought up for. You know, high school offensive line recruits, but I think in the case of Cruz, and I'll mention why later, I think this ability to finish blocks, that tenacity is going to be really key for him. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention specific to his strength, his skill set, um, he's got the place with good knee and hip bend. You know, oftentimes, yeah, I, mean, I don't know if I've mentioned this either yet. Pat, he takes the right approach. He's got good pad level um, approach on run blocking and pass blocking. And so fundamentally, I don't think there's a whole lot of tweaks you have to make to his game. Um, you know, I don't think you really have to worry about injury from poor fundamentals, poor approach either with him. So in all those senses, he's a pretty polished lineman. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into some of the areas of improvement. I mentioned a few moments ago that um, Cruz's ability to finish blocks is something that will help him in the next stage of his development. One of the biggest areas of improvement that I pinpointed for him is that he's a guy that I think still could use a little bit I don't know if it's just added confidence or if it's just going to be some fundamental tweaks to his game. I would say necessarily fundamental tweaks, but you know, just reading the field better and knowing his assignments as he continues to climb the field. He's a guy that he continues to climb levels of opposing defenses, especially in run blocking, that sometimes he can get a little bit lost. Um, the fundamentals do start kind of tailing off a little bit too. And so, you know, once he starts getting two, three, four levels deep, because he is a guy, again, that's quick off the line of scrimmage, has good hands, can finish blocks well, naturally you would think he's a guy that can climb opposing defenses, work his way downfield, and be a good open field blocker. And then the other thing, you know, I've mentioned it here and there, but I just think he needs to add a little bit more size. You know, at 295 right now, he's not quite there yet, um, but I, I mentioned it earlier in the video that he just needs to fill out his frame a little bit more, probably adding like 15, 20 more pounds before he's ready to compete at a power five level in the trenches. Um, you know, lastly, I, I think his trajectory and his fit at Texas, I mentioned at the outset of the video, he's a guy that will, it, in my opinion, be a multi-year starter at Texas. Um, you know, I think he could end up being the best center that Texas has had in the last five years at least. Um, you know, I, I think he's got the tools to really be a consistent, reliable, and versatile blocker because again I mentioned that he can fit different uh, different uh, blocking schemes and you know he's pretty well rounded as a, as it is now and so uh, you know given that Texas doesn't really have a clear option at center even right now I think kind of the weak point along the offensive line is at center with Jake Majors and so you know, I think as soon as Texas has a guy that comes onto the forty that's you know ready to take those starting spots and really assume that job over the long term that Kyle Flood's going to be ready to give that guy the keys to the offensive line. I think Cruz is going to be a guy that's going to be an anchor and a really solid one for this offensive line well into the future. Um, you know, I 
I mentioned this in my article as well, but you know, Cruz is a guy that's often rated as like a mid four star. But I think when we look back at it, that he's going to be a guy that provides like top 100 composite prospect type value to Longhorns for multiple years during his collegiate career. Um, so yeah, you know, let's go ahead and take a look now at uh, just some other recruiting updates that I wanted to give just because there's so much going on in the coming days. And, um, you know, I've done a few articles at the site mentioning like the upcoming decision timelines, um, you know, important commitments to watch here in the near future, just because July is going to be such a busy month for Texas, the, the spots are going to be filling up fast in the 2024 class. I'm sure if you all follow Texas recruiting closely that some of this news, nuggets, whatever that be, uh, you're, you've been made aware of, but I'm going to try to lay it out again in more of a timeline form uh, format here. So uh, again, Texas's latest commitment, Daniel Cruz, that brings Texas up to eight commitments in the 2024 class. Um, I wouldn't surprise me if Texas gets to around uh, 16, maybe 17 by mid to late July. Um, you know, there's still some decision timelines that we're waiting to figure out um, and still some guys that really could commit any day now. Um, and so I'm going to start with guys that have, you know, set decision dates right now and what that looks like. I think Texas is, you know, whenever this video gets published, which will probably be late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Um, one day away from reaching double digit commitments in the 2024 class. Um, that's because the next two scheduled commitments are on Saturday, um, July 1st. You've got uh, four star Lucas Lovejoy wide receiver, Parker Livingstone, um, announcing his commitment. That one is, I think, firmly headed Texas's direction. They've been the leader in that recruitment for a while now. Um, I think they will be the pick there. Livingstone very likely to be the second wide receiver to commit to the 2024 class after four-star uh, Freddie DeBose Jr. And then the other one on Saturday is four-star uh, IMG Academy safety Jordan Johnson Rebel. He announced, I believe that was yesterday, yeah, yesterday on social media that uh, his commitment date is uh, July 1st. I believe it's 2 p.m. Central Time that he'll be committing. There was some noise with uh, TCU in Florida. I mentioned this on our Twitter page that you know, even a TCU um, insider from Horned, Flo Horned Frogs Blitz, which is their 24-7 sports site, um, put in like a pretty confident crystal ball prediction projecting uh, Johnson Rebell's commitment to Texas. If that doesn't say everything you need to know about, you know, squashing any momentum or any noise that was coming from TCU or Florida in regards to Johnson Rebell's commitment, I think that, that pretty much did it. Um, and then... Other decisions coming up here in the next couple of weeks to watch. Uh, July 4th, you've got three-star Langham Creek tight end Jordan Washington. Sorry, I, before I say that, yes, I think John Surville is very, very likely to end up in this class. Um, he's been trending to Texas for a little while now, and I think that his relationships with his staff, um, I think he's got the best relationships with Texas coaches of anyone. You know, Blake Gideon and uh, Tara Joseph, Jeff Banks even, have been, you know, really hitting the recruiting trail hard with Johnson Rebell. He's really liked what he's seen from the Texas coaches for six, eight months now. Um, so anyway, next up is three-star Langham Creek tight end uh, Jordan Washington. He is deciding on July 4th. He will be uh, deciding between really just Texas and Texas a and I know Alabama made his top three, but I, this one, you know, I think that there was a little bit of back and forth between Texas and Texas a and uh, during the visit process earlier this month, you know, I think Texas A&M kind of did a good job swinging the momentum when he visited College Station, but then I think Texas swung it back or swung the momentum back in their favor when he visited Texas officially. That was two weeks ago, about now, and so um, I think the pick will be Texas. Am I as confident as I am with Livingstone and Johnson or Bell? Maybe not, but I'd still put it at least eighty or ninety percent chance that Washington ends up in this class, if not more. Um, he's the top tight end priority on the board right now after Texas missed on four-star Laguna Beach tight end uh, Reiner Swanson, who committed to BYU earlier this month. Washington kind of became the top guy. Um, but I still think this is going to be a two tight end class, so Texas and Jeff Banks are still working on identifying some of the next targets that will be at the top of the big board heading into the fall. I think fall evaluations, you know, senior high school evaluations are going to be a big part of that, uh, kind of figuring out what the next top tight end target is. And so... Um, the next decision up, July 7th, you've got Aaron Hampton, uh, four-star uh, athlete out of Dangerfield in Texas. Um, Hampton's a guy that it has, 
obviously been on Texas's radar and has been in the news cycle for a long time now. He was one of the first to commit in the 2024 class um, more than a year ago now, I believe. Uh, it was along with four-star cornerback Jaden Allen. So both of those guys decommitted, obviously, within the last year or so. But, um, you know, Aaron Hampton, guy that's turning back to Texas right now. Uh, Texas looking at him as a true athlete. His decision is going to come down to Texas and Alabama. Maybe something changes with that here in the next week or so. His recruitment has been pretty wild for the last six months. And, you know, I, I don't doubt that something could change in the near future. But as of now, I think Texas is going to be the pick. I think, uh, you know, I think two names to watch that really could jump in this class at any time. Um, you know, t- two really key defensive back priorities for Texas in the 2024 class. One is four-star Lancaster safety, Corey and Gibson. Um, you know, Gibson, still a Clemson-Texas battle for him. But Texas has had the lead there, I think, really since maybe a week before his official visit to Texas. It's been talked about a lot, but, you know, the fact that he didn't commit to Clemson during his official visit in early June... Um, you know, said a lot about where Texas stood in this recruitment. And you know, Clemson's still pushing hard for him, but you know, I think this is ultimately Texas's recruitment to lose at this point. Looks like Gibson's still on a summer decision timeline, and I think until proven otherwise, Texas is the favorite for him. Um, the other big defensive back recruit that could, again, jump in this class any day for the Longhorns is five-star Wade O'Connolly cornerback Kobe Black. I think one of the biggest priorities in this class Kobe Black's been a Texas lean for a few months now, and you know it really seems like at any point now we could be getting a commitment from him. Um, you know, schools are going to be recruiting him through the finish line, so it's not like Texas can just stop trying to recruit him after he gets in this class. But um, again, I think he's a decision that uh, will ultimately go in Texas's favor. And a few other decisions to watch for later in July that I think could go Texas's way if nothing else, that Texas will be involved in. Um, one of them is July 8th, three-star uh, Pike Road out, uh, out of Alabama, defensive lineman Malik Blockton. Blockton officially visited Texas on the weekend of June 16th. Um, you know, I, I think te- he, he'd ultimately be like a three-tech guy at Texas, but, um, you know, I, I don't know where Texas is ne- necessarily prioritizing him right now, and I know Auburn's really pushing for him. I think Auburn's the favorite right now. But if he ended up at Texas, if there was, you know, a late push by Bo Davis and the Longhorns, Bo Davis really likes those Southeastern defensive linemen, or the defensive linemen out of the Southeast in the United States, and Blockton's a guy that's got a lot of potential with his physical tools, and so, um, you know, that's still going to be a decision to watch. I just don't expect it to go in Texas' favor right now. Um, another defensive line decision, or another decision date among key defensive linemen targets in this class is a uh, three-star Lafayette Christian Academy defensive lineman. Uh, out of Louisiana, Melvin Hills. Um, you know, Hills is a guy that I think Texas is favored for right now, but Ole Miss is still pushing pretty hard for him. I know it's been an Ole Miss-Texas battle here for a month, like the last month or two. And I, you know, I would say if I had to put a percentage chance on it right now, I think Hills is like maybe 65 to 70% chance that he'll pick Texas, whereas Blockton's probably like 20% chance he'll pick Texas. They kind of fill the same role in this class. They're both three tech guys. You know, I think they're about like six foot four, like 275 pounds, still need to put on some weight. But, you know, guys that are both gifted athletes and, you know, ultimately can be long term upside guys at Texas. I think both underrated as well in the current, you know, from the major recruiting services and the current composite rankings. Um, but, you know, I, Hills is going to be a guy that I think could end up in this class, I would say, better than coin flip chance at the moment. Um, but one that we'll, we're going to be continuing to keep our eye on. Um, and then, you know, the the rest of the bunch, you know, I mentioned that I wanted to just give a generic recruiting update. I'll mention two of the elephants in the room right now, one being five-star Duncan Village rusher Colin Simmons. You know, Simmons is a guy that is a pretty firm Texas lean right now. And, you know, there was some noise that he might commit in July coming out here in the last few days. I don't know how much I buy into that at the moment. You know, if I see more, if I see more sustained conversation coming in that realm in the next few weeks, like where, you know, there's kind of more reports coming out, more conversation that he was actually thinking about moving up his decision timeline that far, then um, I, I would probably give in. But, you know, Simmons is still a guy that's being recruited hard by, you know, LSU isn't gonna throw in the towel, even though I think they lost some ground. 
Uh, Miami's definitely not throwing in the towel with them. I think Oregon is letting off the gas, though. That is something I definitely heard over. But Colin Simmons, again, a guy that top priority in this class, hands down on either side of the ball. Firm Texas lean. Texas really knocked it out of the park with their official visit last weekend. He loves what he saw from Texas. And you know, I, as of right now, I'd put it 70 to 80% chance he ends up in this class, if not better than that. 70% actually feels too low, so I'd probably go closer to 80 um, like I said, he's trending pretty firmly toward Texas right now. The other five-star guy I wanted to mention is uh, St. Louis University wide receiver out of Missouri, Ryan Wingo. Uh, Wingo is um, a guy that officially visited Texas on June 16th through the 18th, um, and Texas made a huge move for him that weekend. Um, it kind of took a while for kind of the dust to settle on that and to really see where Texas stood in that recruitment, but, you know, there was a Steve Wilt following crystal ball prediction that was entered today for Texas to land Wingo. You know, that was the first big forecast that I've seen. And, you know, I mentioned on the site after his official visit that Texas felt like it had a legit shot with him. And I think that is pretty obvious at this point. But I'd have to agree with what Steve Wilt Fong said earlier today that Texas is the leader in this recruitment. You know, I, I think Mizzou, Tennessee, um, Georgia are still going to be players in this recruitment. But... Once Steve Sarkeesian gets, you know, kind of gets a lock on a guy, and, you know, I, I don't hesitate to say that Ryan Wingo is the top wide receiver priority in this class now with Mike Hudson turning to Texas Tech. Once Steve Sarkeesian locks in on a guy, it's, you know, it's hard to turn him down. Steve Sarkeesian has recruited some really tremendous wide receiver talents to Austin the last couple of cycles, whether it be portal or high school recruiting. Um, Wingo could be the next guy that's, you know, an elite wide receiver to come to the 40 acres. So... Um, you know, I like where Texas stands there. No set decision date. I know that he's said for a while now that he's going to be patient with his decision timeline. Um, it could carry into the fall. It also wouldn't surprise me if it wraps up just before the start of his senior season in high school. So we'll see. But, you know, Texas has the lead right now. You got to love where they stand. Um, finish up here. You know, Texas missed out earlier this week on uh, three-star Arlington Martin interior offensive lineman Makai Sina. He committed to USC. That now puts uh, three-star interior offensive lineman out of uh, Chatsworth, California, uh, Eugene Brooks. I believe he's out at yeah, Sierra Canyon High School. I think Brooks was kind of the next guy up on Texas's big board among interior offensive linemen if Sign, or if Sign had committed elsewhere. Um, he's a guy to watch. I believe that a July decision is something that could come from him. Um, we'll see. Uh, you know, Texas made a good impression on him. He officially visited uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, you know, again, I think if Texas pushes, they'll be the, they'll be the spot there. Um, and then two key interior defensive linemen to watch here in the coming weeks. Uh, you got four star, uh, IMG Academy interior defensive lineman, Jaden Jackson, uh, Texas and Ohio state are the two involved for him right now. I don't think there's any set decision date. And I know there's still some stuff to kind of play out there behind the scenes, but, Texas sits in a good spot right now. Uh, just kind of depends on how much they push. Uh, four-star, uh, another four-star IMG Academy interior defensive lineman, and again, someone that officially visited Texas last weekend, uh, TJ Lindsey. Um, TJ Lindsey, similar in a sense to Malik Blockton, is a Texas versus Auburn battle. Um, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to say where he's leaning right now, but, you know, Texas made a good impression. I do think that Jaden Jackson is a little bit more of a priority than TJ Lindsay at the moment. I think Jaden Jackson has the higher upside of the two, but TJ Lindsay is probably a little bit more physically ready right now to compete early. I don't know if Texas necessarily needs that, but you know, both guys on Texas's radar, we'll see. Um, I think at the, at the moment, though, Texas is firmly involved in for both, and both definitely could have decisions in mind by the end of July. I, th I wouldn't doubt that both of them are committed within the next few weeks. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I, uh, like I said, wanted to provide some recruiting updates as well as, uh, you know, breaking down Daniel Cruz's game, but, uh, yeah, we'll be coming back this weekend. I got another video coming out with me and Tarek for, you know, talking about some summer workouts updates. And then we got a basketball update as well with, uh, Shane and I coming here in the next few days. But anyway, for, uh, Andrew Miller, hookemheadlines.com. That's pretty much it. Welcome. Okay.